good morning to one and all. Uh, I'm Dr. Priyanka and today we are going to continue with our FBD lectures. So the topic for today is diagnosis and treatment planning in fix prostodontics. So coming to the learning outcome, so by the end of the lecture, you should be able to describe the sequence of recording extra and intraoral findings. Um, sorry, just, yeah, okay. Intraoral findings, okay. I recall the diagnostic indices for partially dentulous and for completely dented patient based on the diagnostic findings. Uh, discuss the general. So coming for uh, about talking about the significance of replacement. So dental arch is not a static entity and it is in state of dynamic equilibrium. So it keeps, there are some changes that keeps taking place, right? And tooth loss is a loss of structural integrity and a new equilibrium is achieved. So once the tooth is lost, there is drifting of teeth, migration, there is super eruption, there are changes in the occlusion, okay? So pathological drifting uh, yeah, of the teeth may be present, okay? So the choices can be seen as follows, FPD, uh, CPD, and implants, okay? Coming to the treatment plan purpose, so formulating a logical sequence of treatment designed to restore the patient dentition to good health and optimal function and appearance. So yes, we are taking care of the function and the aesthetics. And of course, to restore back in the function, to restore back the occlusion. So what is an ideal treatment plan? Our treatment plan uh, is to achieve uh, is that which achieves the best possible long-term outcomes for the patient while address, addressing all patients' concerns and active problems with the minimum necessary intervention. Okay, so you know that if you make it a good treatment plan, then only you can do a good treatment. Okay, so identification of patient needs. So, uh, correction of existing disease. <clears throat> if the patient is uh, already partially edentulous or uh, suffers from any type of other dental diseases, we need to first correct those, okay? And then we can go forward with the replacements. Okay, prevention of future diseases. So, we have to do such a treatment that doesn't fail and doesn't affect the occlusion of adjacent teeth or doesn't harm the equilibrium of the mouth. Restoration of function. This is really important, guys. We run after restoring the function. And uh, it is very, because it's very important and uh, we need to restore all the functions of the teeth, right? So most importantly, in our case, being the occlusion and mastication, okay? And speech, guys, phonetics, okay? So improvement of appearance, okay, comes the aesthetic aspects of the patient. Of course, we are concerned about the aesthetics and the patient is highly concerned about the aesthetics because the patient doesn't really understand the technical functions of the prosthesis, but they uh, immediately look forward to achieving the satisfaction level of aesthetics right so in any case we are supposed to uh, fulfill all the needs guys <clears throat> okay so okay so coming to the treatment plan which is by phases so phase one is the diagnosis here we take up a medical and dental history i can repeatedly tell you if the OMR or if any other department has already taken the history, that is good. But we are doing our OPD according to the PROSTO requirements. So that has to be taken again. Everything needs to be recorded again. Okay. So especially the past dental history and the medical history, right? 
everything has to be known and everything has significance especially some medical problems yes do have significance okay so then coming to the clinical examination that is the oral examination which we write in the uh, our case sheets if there is radiographic uh, films you have to write the radiographic findings okay any treatment cast any treatment photographs any wax subs any aesthetic evaluation so basically you have to write in detail and observe in detail all these things to come to a diagnosis first of all when the patient comes to your department okay coming to phase two is we are now trying to do the disease control okay so now we come to the various departments we will do periodontal therapy endodontic removal of existing restoration caries control so in periotherapy, I always tell you that perio department always comes first. Yes. At the end of the day, the patient should come to prosto or at the end of all the treatments, guys, right? So perio periotherapy has to be taken care of. The gums, the bone, the attachment, everything has to be cleared up from calculus, deposits, anything required has to be taken care of first. Then comes the endodontic therapy. If required, any endo interventions must be taken care of, which means removal of existing restoration, caries control, or RCT. Okay. Only when these two departments come into play, that is the uh, per periodontics and the endodontics, then only we will be able to proceed further with our treatment. Okay. Coming to phase three, so we're trying to do a restorative phase here. We are doing crown lengthening if required, implant surgery if required, okay? Uh, any other, you know, uh, surgery, small surgeries uh, if required, okay? And uh, agnatologic uh, uh, technique is used if required, guys, okay? Long-term uh, provisional restorations, um, if required, again, would be done any permanent restoration, if required, should be taken care of, okay? So you have to follow a logical um, sequence, okay? And uh, then only things work. Yeah, so, sorry, by the way, this methodologic uh, technique just means like a phase bow registration okay it's just a fancy term which means phase bow registration so guys yes taking maybe doing a jaw relations right so that is what it is guys okay so our treatment everything will come in the restorative treatment guys okay and uh, any provisional restoration permanent restoration anything which we have, will do we will be here okay it can only be done again when we are done with the other treatments and when the other um, requirements of the mouth is fulfilled and ready for restoration in prosto department okay coming to phase four that is the maintenance phase so yes we do say it and uh, not many people or patients follow it we should recall every six months yes some patients only come when they have problems and that's also fine but ideally the recall or at least they should visit the dentist six months once in six every six months okay uh, in maintenance phase, also fluoride supplements, if required, can be given, reinforce the oral hygiene and improve the diet. So all these comes in the maintenance phase, guys, okay? So it can be re reinforced to the patients and uh, talked about in detail. Sorry, we'll be taking it up more in detail, okay? So like I told you once again, past dental history is important. Medical history, some certain diseases do require the patients to have early appointments or um, we have to see that the patient's appointments are done faster and we have to take care of those things right and there are other indications as well we'll be discussing it later okay uh, clinical examination you're supposed to 
write all the things which are present in the patient's mouth, diagnostic picture, if there uh, can be taken or seen, if it was previously taken, any diagnostic cast, if required, can be taken up, wax up, if required, can be done, radiographic film can be uh, used, okay? Prognosis depends on the general factors, which is age and the oral environment. So how well is the patient maintaining the uh, oral environment? That's what it you know is all about. And uh, the age of the patient, yes, that also uh, like uh, plays an important role because um, if in a very elderly patient, Patients, uh, it's a, there is a good possibility that the patient has some systemic diseases and uh, the healing or the progress is slower, okay, as in comparison with a young patient, okay. And local factors are occlusion, uh, 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 then uh, taking care of the oral hygiene. So these are the factors which generally affect okay so coming to the history uh, patient expectations can be understood so that has to be understood properly medical history is very important guys and it has to be taken seriously especially diabetes okay so it affects the prognosis it affects the wound healing um, there are a lot more to do with diabetes the patient's appointments when is the patient eating how long is the patient able to sit uh, so many, many things, okay? Rheumatic heart diseases, prophylaxis, yes, can be affected, guys. And uh, any infectious diseases, um, if it is there, then it, uh, the patient has to be uh, cautioned about it. And, uh, you know, uh, we have to make a note of that. And uh, the patient has to be treated for that first before getting intervention for any dental treatments, okay? pacemakers or electrosurgical any di dilatation so any of these has again has to be taken care of and seen that the patient uh, how's the, how's it going to affect us in our treatment right if any a raise in blood pressure any issues uh, any cardiac issues we should have an emergency kit ready and we should be uh, you know uh, able to restore uh, at least some uh, emergency drugs, right? Uh, other than that, any previous radiation, if anything is present, okay? If the patient received any, okay. Uh, continuing with the history, so if any allergies, even anaphylaxis, or anything to do with any al allergic reactions, especially also to medications, okay? So yeah, medications, adverse drug reactions, yes. Hypertension, so again, you have to give like LA without the adrenaline. So again, uh, these things have to be taken care of. Cardiac problems, yes, affects the pro, uh, pro, you know, prophylaxis and you have to see how to treat it, how to treat that patient, not the cardiac problem. Epilepsy, patients should have short appointments and we should know that in emergency, what are we supposed to take care of if the patient has fits. Hypoglycemia, yes, the patient can undergo syncope or coma. So yes, that has to be taken care of. So it has to be restored. Xerostomia definitely has a very poor prognosis. So... If there is xerostomia, treatments fail because saliva plays a very important role in prostodontics, guys, yeah? Okay. Coming to the clinical examination. So, coming to a general examination, which is divided into extraoral and intraoral. So, extraoral examination has the head and neck examination. So, all the features, everything has to be palpated and noted down. TMJ evaluation... Uh, um, all the movements have to be checked. The stiffness has to be checked. Uh, all the movements have to be done, okay? Muscles of mastication. Uh, so the muscles which can be checked and palpated should be checked. 
uh, coming to the intraoral examination. So in intraoral, you check for the oral hygiene status, the nature and the quality of saliva, which is very important in prosthodontics. Examination of the teeth. So is the teeth uh, having any restoration or is there a problem in the teeth or is there something missing? So all the examination. Occlusal examination, yes, what type of occlusion does the patient have? Is there any supra eruption? Okay, so all the occlusal examination has to be done. The periodontal examination is very important. Again, if the period is not fine, prosthodontic surgery is definitely going to fail. So, for peri examination, you have to take care of the gums, the attachment, and the gingival levels. Okay, if required any intervention which has to be done prior, you can. Okay, coming to the radiographic evaluation, so you can see complete mouth radiograph series are needed. 14 IOPA or 4 bite wings. Okay, just take an OPG is better. <laughs> yeah, so panoramic radiograph obviously is better. TMJ radiographs, if you feel in palpation there is a clicking sound, there is some sound, there is some issue, then you can do it. All of them give the information that cannot be de detected clinically, obviously. So definitely you need an OPG or an IO. Okay. Coming to radiographic evaluation. So uh, you can see that, um, you know, radiographs are, uh, IOPs are very commonly taken to see details of one certain area, which is very important. So it basically shows the remaining bone support and bone quality root number and morphology if anything is present not present okay uh, periodontal ligament and uh, any tfos if present resorption or furcation involvement carious lesion focal status periopical pathologies retained roots calcification foreign bodies oral manifestation of systemic diseases okay so any of these have to be taken care of and have to be evaluated okay and we do it daily guys so you you know all that but of course it has to be remembered okay diagnostic impressions are cast so this is very important in our prosthodontics uh, for any other dental treatment also i think diagnostic cost or study model is very important so diagnostic impression is taken by an alginate stock stock tray it's a high quality impression with no words it should be at least a clinical instructor must see and whatever you know uh, before pouring the impression so yes although basically the impression should be perfect and uh, so you're able to draw if required you're able to put the cast on the table so you have to definitely make a base okay of the diagnostic impression or any impression guys okay so it avoids the chances of breaking of an impression okay so type 3 dental plaster is used to pour diagnostic cast diagnostic cast evaluation criteria so accurate reproduction of teeth and tissue base thickness and land area thickness okay so this is all stuff you know and we do it daily, right in a daily work so this is how a diagnostic cast looks like and then this is basically articulated on a hanao white view articulator guys okay so it's just showing you that the casa needs to be perfect and should be articulated well okay so if you know or you take a patient bite and articulate the casa then you can do designing of your prosthesis or study the model basically okay so diagnostic cast provide valuable prelim info and information and comprehensive overview of patient needs okay treatment procedures can be rehearsed on the stone cast before making any irreversible changes in the patient's mouth yes yeah? so any major uh, things which has to be practiced can be practiced there um used by the diagnostic wax up prelim rpd designing which we do yes and surgical stent surgical procedures anything can be done it also helps to explain the procedure to the patient so if by chance you make an arbitrary treatment um, option uh, such as like an RPD with a wax or something you can just show the patient that this is how it looks so basically in ca complex cases which you are not able to explain it to explain the patient right coming to the diagnostic wax up so diagnostic wax up must be completed prior to beginning 
any reconstructive treatment that is casting prosthesis or definitive periodontal therapy. So diagnostic wax up is when you build wax on a prepared teeth or uh, on an edentulous area and you want to show the patient that this is how the model will look like after you receive a crown or a bridge or any other fixed prosthesis. Um, that's so exactly, that is what the wax up looks like, okay? So you can see the darkened areas, okay, all right? So the patient is able to see and appreciate that, oh yeah, you know, this is how the pugil anatomy looks like. And this is an arbitrary way, uh, this is how a final a processes would look like, okay? If you can articulate in a class and show the patient, that's also fine. But it's basically, articulation is basically for you to understand how the process is, is behaving with the other teeth, um, how it is working. Coming to, uh, so basically diagnostic VASAP is also used to show proposed treatment to the patient. Yes. Used for fabrication of provisional restorations. So yes, we do it. Uh, uh, for the FPD patients, fabrication of final restoration against the diagnostically waxed uh, cast, which allows establishing an optimum contour and occlusion. Okay, so to establish a contour and uh, occlusion, provide specific info about desired tooth length and form or occlusion arrangement. Right, so dentist, lab technician, communications. So this is also very good technique of communicating with each other that this is what I wanted can you do that for me like I'm communicating with the technician he'll understand oh that's what the doctor is looking for right it's easy to show the patient so basically all these can is self-explanatory guys um I'm not going in details of these so the factors has to be known okay so if you take care of all the factors everything should go Okay, so summarizing uh, the topic, successful accomplishment of dental treatment is the result of multidisciplinary team effort, right? So first, all the other departments and then comes the prosthodontist. Remember that in mostly all the cases, okay, in most of the cases at least. The key of successful dental case is the planning of the treatment at the beginning. Okay, so you're supposed to do a pre-planning and then you're supposed to do a proper treatment planning, diagnosis, and then only the treatment can go according to plan. Okay, guys? So thank you so much for listening.